Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you happen to be new here, my name is Jess. As you guys can tell from the title of this video, today we are going to be talking about books that are on my never to buy, never to read list. A lot of these books people have spoken about before and really, really like them, but for one reason or another, I have no interest in reading them. A few of these I have seen all over Instagram. That's kind of what I did to film this video. I went on Instagram and kind of saw the most overrated books that I could find and sort of broke down why I haven't bought them. Like they're super popular books that I see everywhere and I still haven't purchased them. And I wanted to go over why I haven't read any of these books with you guys. I did a series like this before on my channel when I first started doing booktube and I feel like the longer time I spend here the longer I know kind of what books interest me and why other books don't interest me so I thought I'd sit down today and talk to you guys about that. Obviously as a disclaimer here we are all so different we all like books for very different reasons we all find value in books for very different reasons so for whatever reason I mention a book that you are a huge fan of don't take it personally. The way things are we tend to purchase books because our friends really like them or you know somebody really speaks highly of them so i think it's normal and natural to feel like you don't want to read a book because someone who reviews it and whose reviews you trust say that hey that's not a book that i'm particularly interested in and this is why and you can kind of relate to that so i feel like even though you've never read a book before it's normal to be like, I just really don't have any interest in reading that. Now, a part of the reason why I kind of make these lists is because I don't want to read a book that I know I'm probably not going to like for one reason or another based on another review, something that I absolutely abhor, you know, whatever reason it may be. I don't want to read a book and then give a bad review on it. I feel like that's unfair to the author. So that's why I have this list. And I thought I'd take the time today to sit down and talk to you guys about a couple of books that I have on this list and the reason why I don't want to read them. So the first books I have here are actually the Lord of the Rings series. Yes, I am so sorry. I am one of those people. I actually have sat through marathons of the movies. I love the movies. I love the storyline. But the thing is, J.R.R. Tolkien, his writing style is not for me. I was actually forced to read The Hobbit in the fifth grade and I absolutely hated it and ever since then it's left a really bad taste in my mouth. So it is a series that I've not gone back to. It is a series that I have not continued with. I've only ever read The Hobbit and I have no interest in reading the rest of the series. I feel like it's just too far gone for me. I know everything that happens, I, there's nothing left for me to go back to, to read. And I know a lot of friends that really genuinely love them and kind of like base their, you know, their big fandom is Lord of the Rings. But for me, it's just not something that I am interested in. Although I will give it to him for being a pioneer with his, within his genre. I think that he did a lot of great things. I just personally don't want to read them. Now the next series I have on here I've heard from a lot of people that it is absolutely wonderful and then I started hearing that the most recent book was an absolute crapshoot and that would be the Shatter Me series. I have no desire to read these books. I am not a fan of YA dystopians. I feel like that is not a genre that I'm necessarily going to be a fan of. I feel like dystopians sound interesting to me like obviously Fahrenheit 451 is one of my most favorite books of all time and that's definitely a dystopian but I feel like the YA genre dystopians aren't something that I'm really going to like. Another thing I heard is that the main characters are very one-dimensional and that the world building kind of sucks and honestly if there's not character and world building if both of those are lacking it's definitely not something that I'm going to like. Also it sounds like the main character is sort of the mixed rogue in a way that she sort of hurts people when she touches them and as somebody who's a really big fan of the X-Men I feel like I already heard that before and I already love Rogue so much that I don't want like a half s character version of her. So overall with lacking character development, lacking world building, YA dystopian, and a storyline that I've already heard before, I think I'm just going to go ahead and pass on the series. Also the series is massive. I think the fourth one or the fifth one just came out and I'm not all about trying to, you know, put my time into a series that I'm probably absolutely going to hate. All right, the next book I have here is one that I went back and forth on whether or not I was going to read it, but I've actually heard from a lot of people's reviews that I really trust that this book isn't as great as it is. Now I can find value in kind of what it's doing though, and that would be The Upside of unre Unrequited. God, I can't say that. The Upside of Unrequited. I have heard that there it, it boasts a lot of diversity, but I feel like a lot of people, what they got from the diversity in that book, because she is a plus size character, our MC is, but I hear that a lot of the story kind of winds down to she's not going to feel validated until she has a boyfriend. Now, I know a lot of people who can relate to that, but just because you can relate to something doesn't necessarily mean that it's a positive thing to relate to. Being plus size and finding power and being plus size, I think, is relatable for a lot of people, but finding relatability in a character who feels validated from having a boyfriend because she's plus size 
while that may be relatable, that's not necessarily positive. Um, but I still think it's important what Becky Albertalli is doing for the genre, you know, for diversity for plus size characters, but it doesn't sound like something that I'm necessarily going to like. I don't like storylines like that, but I, like I said, I kind of went back and forth on whether or not I was going to read it, but then I also heard that the plotline in it absolutely sucks. There's no story development. There's it's just a lot of character dialogue and back and forth and sort of lacks in that kind of sense, and also that the characters are very one-dimensional. I read a couple of reviews of snippets of the book, and from what I could read, it just it didn't seem like something I was going to like. And this is one of those books that falls into that genre of I don't want to review a book and knowing that I'm genuinely not going to like it. I, I feel like that this type of book is a book that needs to be left alone and kind of, you know, for me at least, I already know I'm not going to like it and I don't want to go in knowing that I'm eventually going to give this book a negative review. So that's why this book is on this list and maybe that'll change later. I don't know, maybe if I read more reviews, but most of the people that I trust when it comes to their reviews, a lot of them said that they didn't enjoy it. So I'm going to go ahead and pass on this one for now, although I may revisit it in the future. Okay, now this next one that I have here isn't necessarily a book, it's actually an author in totality. Um, it's Cassandra Clare. I kind of missed the boat on Cassandra Clare. The first time I ever heard about her I was much younger and it was about a copyright issue that they were having with her writing. Um, it seemed like there was a big issue with some similarities between her writings and another author's writings and that was the first time I'd ever heard about her. And I didn't really find the time to pick up any of her books. Her series are massive. I know a couple of them are smaller, but the one series is absolutely huge. I know so little about them that I don't even know the names of them anymore. I have also seen snippets of the show that she has and the Shadow Hunters, and it doesn't seem like something I'm really gonna like. And I hear that a lot of it is just like her writing style is very poor. Like there's a lot of struggle between when she first started and now there's a big gap in how much her writing style has improved, which I think is very important. But for me, her being a an author that's already kind of like substantial, I don't have the time to kind of get through, you know, two, three, four, however many books with crap writing to get to the good writing. I feel like for me, I read so much that I just don't have time to do that. I feel like if I were to pick up one of those books, it would take me forever to read it. So at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and probably never read a Cassandra Clare book. And I'm sorry if you're a big fan of her because I know she's incredibly popular, but uh, she doesn't sound like an author that I'm really going to like. Like I said, I don't really like the kind of world stuff, like the storyline ideas that she has right now. So Definitely not something that's very high on my list of things to read and probably an author that unfortunately I will never ever read. Now the next book I have here is actually a book that if you guys want the full review on I will link Jade's video down below but it is Given to the Sea and I trust Jade's reviews on books so much because with Jade she really reads for enjoyment and sometimes I just need a book that has a lot of enjoyment and value in it. Not necessarily like story value but just enjoyment and when I read her review or when I watched her review for this book I was like okay I'm never ever going to read this and now even when I see people reviewing this book positively I'm very confused. Given to the Sea follows a main character who's essentially her job is to get pregnant and have girls and then die. And she decides that's not the life she wants to live, as any person would probably decide. And instead of the king respecting her wishes or the, the society respecting her wishes, the king actually decrees that whoever can get her pregnant, you know, will get riches or, you know, whatever the reward will be. Now, I shake my head because I'm so confused why people find value in a book that essentially encourages rape because to get her pregnant you know there'd have to be sex and she doesn't want said sex so does or does not that mean rape I don't know it's, it's really confusing to me and it doesn't sound like a book that I'm at all going to want to read I just I find the storyline very confusing and I find like the whole premise of it very confusing and from what I've heard it's not even written very well so bad storyline bad writing definitely not something that I'm ever 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 gonna read now the next book that I have here I'm actually pretty sad about because I saw such great, like I saw so many authors talking about this book and how wonderful it was and how revolutionary it was and then I did a little bit more research on it and was like this doesn't sound like something that I am at all interested in and that would be The Bells. Apparently the society that they live in there are these girls that are absolutely beautiful and for some reason that gives them some sort of power and I don't know if it's because other people are ordinary but just in the basis of it a book that is based around women with power or women with beauty having power, that sounds so boring and stupid to me. I just, it doesn't sound like something I'm going to like at all. But like I said, I've heard some good reviews about it, but I've heard most of the reviews that I have heard from people that I trust are like, the storyline is incredibly stupid. And I kind of get that. Like, like I said, a storyline based around a woman who has beauty and that makes her powerful. I don't know, it just sounds deprecating to me and not like something that I'm at all going to like. So I'm not going to waste my time with it, unfortunately. But I am curious, if you have read it, what did you think of it? Because 
that's all I've gotten from the storyline, but I feel like it's such a new book that I don't really know much about it. So if, it, if I'm a little bit off on my thoughts about it, please let me know, because this is one of the ones that I haven't picked up yet that was spoken about highly and kind of why I was hesitant to pick it up. But if you have any more information on it, please let me know in the comments, because like I said, a lot of people said that it was absolutely amazing. All right, guys, so that is it for today's video. Those are the books that I don't really want to read right now um, for what one reason or another. A couple of these maybe in the future I will get to, but as of right now, it just doesn't seem like something I'm going to like. If you have read any of these and you agree with my review, or even if you had read some of these and you disagree with why I don't want to read them, leave it in the comments down below. Let me know your thoughts on it. I'd be really interested to hear them, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and think about subscribing, but I will see you guys in Friday's video. Bye!